Hi there and welcome to today's tutorial on uh, population structure. Um, please remember to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash examiner vision and follow, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. So the population structure can be shown on population pyramids and this is really really important uh, that we understand these population pyramids. So this here is a population pyramid and population pyramids uh, can show us a few things. Okay, really obviously, really uh, what's really obvious is that it can it can show us the sex, so it can show us the male and females, and then it shows us the ages. And then along the bottom, it shows the percentage of people in each category group. Um, why do governments need this? Why do why do we need to look at these population pyramids and look at these population structures? Well, the reason why we need to do this is governments use these population pyramids to predict future services that they may need okay for example if they see that there's loads of a large percentage of males and females in the age of zero to four then what they might have to decide then is that they need to build more schools because when they when those uh, when that group gets to five years old they might not have enough schools and they might need more health services if they find that they've got a lot of aging population so the population is quite is quite old well then what they might really realise that they might need is more hospitals, more medical care and so on. So these population structures are shown in population pyramids and are really, really important for basically helping the government predict what, they, what services they need for the future. So population pyramids show us, they can tell us five different things. Okay, They can tell us the percentage of males and females, that's the first thing. So the percentage of males and females. They can show us the different age groups, the percentage of different age groups. So, so for example, if I, somebody asked me, can you tell me what female is for the United States? We can see 0 to 4, and that's about 10%. If somebody else asked me, can you tell me the, from males, from 85 to 89, I'll go across 85 to 89, bring it down, it's roughly about 1.5%, okay, and so on. Population pyramids also tell us the life expectancy. They tell us the dependency groups, and this is something that I talked about in population um, in part one, my first video for population, and this is really, really important because this is a common question because up in a junior certificate examination, asking you to work out the dependency groups, and dependency groups is the number of people that are active compared to the number of people that are inactive and how they are supported. Now, this to get the inactive is people that can't, they are not working. It's the group from zero to fifteen. So you'd have to add up all the people that are in percentage that are in group from zero to fifteen, and that are sixty five and over, and that will give you the dependency group. Okay, the two dependency groups add them together, and that give you that give you uh, your percentage. And the last thing the population pyramids uh, can tell us is they can show us the economic development, and how do you show us the economic development is by showing how many how many births there and how many deaths there, and where they where uh, if there's a, if there's a really really high birth rate, well then we might say that might be it might be a developing country. If the life expectancy is not that high, that'll also show us that it might be a developing country. If it's a really really well developed country, usually what you see is low birth rate and a low death rate. And I'll talk a bit more of this um with some other population structures that I'll show you in a few minutes. Population pyramids. Okay, so what you need to know for population structure is you need to know two case studies, one for a developing country and one for a developing country. So the case study that we're going to look, for, look at for the developing country is Brazil. Brazil is a developing country. And I'm going to show you their population pyramid now. So here's Brazil's population pyramid, okay? And there's a few things that we, we, we're going to look at here. Um, the first thing is we can see that Brazil has a really, really wide base okay and a wide base means that they've got a high birth rate and usually what you find is in developing countries you find that they have a really really wide base because they have a high birth rate this is due to a number of factor factors such as lack of family planning traditional role of the women uh, in the status of women children work from a very early age so they have loads and loads of children so then they can send them out really young to, to earn as much money as they possibly can for the family and because there's a higher rate of info, infant mortality. The next thing we look at is after we look at the, the wide base we always look at the base first well I do anyway I because that shows the birth rates then I go and I look at um, the top of the, the pyramid 
And at the top of the pyramid, you can see that's a very narrow peak. So Brazil is a very narrow peak. And this tells us that debt rates are high. And this will be due to a number of factors such as poor living standards, lack of clean water in Brazil, poor medical services, and lack of good food and education within Brazil. So therefore that will lead to higher debts, um, which will lead to a narrow peak at the top. And the last thing we can look at for Brazil's population pyramid is that we might notice that there's a re reduction in the population. So the population is starting to decline. And that is good. That means that the country is changing from being a developing country and going towards being a developed country. Because you remember, in developed countries, they don't have as many children as they do in developing countries. So if the population is starting to decline, that's a good thing. It might mean that um, education is improving. Family planning is, is improving, mothers are becoming more educated. It might mean that the status of women is increasing, so therefore women are deciding to change from that traditional role and go out and, and, and get educated and go on to university and go on and take up higher uh, jobs in, in society. And if they do that, they don't tend to have as much time f to have as many children. It might mean that the supply of clean water is improving, or it might just mean that healthcare and services is, is improving that they got access to vaccinations for children, so uh, infant mortality is not, is not as, as high, and so on. So, if you'd like to jot down uh, the few points that I just uh, jotted down here, please do. So, we can see Brazil is a developing country. It's got a wide base, which means that it's high birth rate. This is due to maybe lack of family plan, high infant mortality. The status of women might be very traditional. Or they might need to have a lot of children because they need to send them out for work. The debt rate, we can see it's a narrow peak, that's because the debt rate is high. This might be due to poor standards of living, lack of good food, poor medical services, uh, or lack of clean water. And in the future, what we'll see is we can see that Brazil's um, um, population is actually declining. And this is good because you need to move from a, to move from developing to developed, your population will decline. And this might be due to education of mothers, where they become more aware of family planning, and more aware of contraceptive uh, methods. Might be because of the improved status of women, you know, the role of women within society, maybe because they've got ac better access to clean, clean and water, or maybe because health care has, has improved. Or it might be some, it's something to do with all of these four factors um, that has led to uh, the decline of population in Brazil. So, the next thing you need to know for your junior certificate examination is, in population is you need to know another case study um, on population structure, so population pyramids. But so an example with this of a, a developed country we can use is Ireland. Okay, and I'm going to show you the population pyramid of Ireland now, and we can see how it's how it's different to Brazil. Okay, so this is the population pyramid for Ireland. Okay, and Ireland is a developed country, so it should look different than Brazil okay and I think from looking at it already you can see that there is quite a few differences in the way it looks and how it looks Brazil's one looked like almost like a perfect like triangle or like a pyramid this doesn't really look like a pyramid it looks a little bit different okay um, so the first thing we're gonna look at as, as we should always look at the, at the at these population structures these population pyramids the first thing you should look at is the base okay and the base is a lot narrower compared to Brazil so we've got a lot narrower base so a narrow base tells me that there's a low birth rate. And this might be because of the following factors. It means that they've got low infant mortality rate. It might be because they've got access to family planning and contraceptive methods. It might be because the status of women is much, uh, is much better in Ireland and Instead of taking the traditional role of staying at home and looking after all the children, women are becoming educated, going on to university, and taking up really powerful and high roles within society. Women are also delaying having children until they're older. They're not having, it, having children as young as they used to in the past. And it might be because of the less dependency on primary activities as their economy develops. So in the past, you need to have loads of children so they could help out on the farm. But as our economy has developed, and Ireland is quite a developed economy now, we don't actually depend on farming as much as we used to 50 years, like 50 years ago, or maybe 100 years ago. The next thing I can see is that we've got, from like looking at from about like 65 upwards, 
we've got a very wide uh, peak. And a wide peak tells me that the debt rate are low. And debt rates in Ireland are low because of a number of factors. It might be because we've got um, good technology, um, so, so our, our healthcare is, 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 is improved greatly. It might be because our facilities in our healthcare has improved greatly. Um, it might be because our education on our diets and how and about nutrition and and so on has improved that we actually know how to uh, like what we should eat and what and what's what's good for us and what's like not maybe not so good for us. Our access to clean water and sanitation uh, might be greatly improved. And overall, Ireland has a good standard of living, which gives us um and quite like a wide peak at the top, which means that the debt rate is low. So, here's just a few things if you'd like to take these down. Um, and it's basically just where I repeated there a few minutes ago. Um, so, in Ireland, it's a developed country. Um, our birth rates, it's got a narrow base. Uh, usually in developed countries, it's got a narrow base. That means it's got a low birth rate, and it's due to having maybe low infant mortality, better family plan, role of women, status of women. It's improved. Less dependency on primary economic, economic activities, such as farming, and maybe delaying children until later. Um, until women are older. Uh, the debt rate is quite a wide uh, peak, which means it's got low debt rates. This could be due to better health care facilities, access to clean water and sanitation, and better education. So that's the end of this tutorial on uh, population structures, where we looked at population uh, pyramids, and we looked at developing and a developed uh, country, and how the population pyramids differ, and what things, what are the factors that m m make these uh, shapes of the pyramid like like different. If you liked my video, can you please subscribe to my YouTube channel? Um, you can do so on youtube.com forward slash examine vision. If you're on YouTube now, can you please like write a comment, say if you enjoyed it, say if, you, if, if things that maybe you'd like to, to see in the future. Um, and you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at examine vision for you. Thanks guys.